This is me meeting my new students for the first time. His name is Chico and he's a three-year-old Great Dane whose owner cannot control on a leash whenever they are out in public. As you guys are about to find out, it is not only on a leash that his owner cannot control him, but wait until you see this dog off leash. He gets completely out of control and literally he knows he can get away with it thus far. So today we are here to start to intervene with those, those bad behaviors and try to turn him around and get him to be more obedient and teach the owner also how to have better control over Chico. So if you're thinking that maybe the leash walking isn't so bad after all, or if you think that this is already bad enough, wait until you guys see him off leash. Chico gets really excitable and very overpowering over other dogs. Even though it's in a friendly way, he gets to a point where it's definitely very overwhelming and to be too much for most dogs. Even for Owen, as you guys are going to be seeing here soon, as soon as Chico gets off leash, she goes straight into a full run and like a friendly attack on other dogs. And he literally just tries to bite their back and really tries to overpower them. And being that he's such a big dog, this can easily hurt another dog and also easily overwhelm other dogs. So he actually runs a lot of the dogs at the park away from the park, away from their owners out of, in a, out of panic because the dogs see this gigantic dog running towards them and they get in a panic and they just run away from the owners and trying to escape the beast that is coming towards them again he doesn't do this in any type of aggressive way but it is pretty aggressive how he approaches his dogs if you understand what i mean he's not trying to hurt them but he can easily hurt them and most definitely does hurt them when he bumps into them at full speed as you guys are also going to see here very soon when he spotted another great thing that does not belong to the same owner and he just chased her and bumped right into her knocking her to the ground uh, with owen uh he is slobbers all over him he literally would he's very relentless and will not give the other dog a break which most dogs are not going to tolerate that so if you see, look at Owen, he's getting very pissed off. He's a three-year-old intact male with impeccable temperament, and he's handling this pretty well, but eventually gets to a point where the dog just can no longer what is that? tolerate all that. He's like saying, get over here and play and, with me. He's going to you know, get me. Get me if you can. Dog being targeted by a bigger dog, even though he's just trying to play. So here he runs away because Owen is no longer fun. He likes to find dogs cool. that run away from him so that he can chase them. But he will he relentlessly, relent I'm sorry. He will relentlessly chase them and do what he just did there where he knocks dogs to the ground and he still won't stop. He just keeps on top of them. And the worst part about all of this, which is what I'm here today to help the owner with, is that the owner's command it is absolutely meaningless to Chico once he, once he's off leash and doing this behavior with other dogs. The owner can try to call him, try to stop him. Chico will run around him in circles and he will not stop. <laughs> We're gonna do his first lesson today. Oh, it's his first lesson? Yeah. I swear, honestly, I did one lesson with him, my dog's different dog. Stop. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> 
Now after watching Chico's owner chasing him all over the park and yelling for him to stop and trying to get his attention with no success, it is now finally the time where I take over the leash and start Chico's training for the first time. And I'm going to go over with you guys what I'm doing here. The first thing that I'm doing that his owner doesn't do is apply a firm tag on the leash as a correction to get Chico's attention. As you see right there, when Chico tried to move away from me, I would do a firm tug, enough to get his attention. Even there, when I was going to call him, and I already know he's not a very res very responsive dog, when I call him, I immediately do a jerk on the leash to get his attention, and then I demand that he comes to me with that attitude, that, that confidence that the dog will have to listen. So it's very important that you have that personality where, hey, I will get you to listen. Now you see how I apply that pressure again a few times in a row to really let him know I'm not playing games and you need to calm down. You are a big dog and you need to respond. Now, this is the best way to get the dog's attention and to be able to communicate with them. Another thing you guys see here is um, he knows how to sit, but he doesn't really like to do it because he likes to do his own thing and he's used to getting away with whatever he wants to do. What you notice him trying to do there when I try to get him to sit uh, is actually try to slip out of the collar, which is another thing that he does to escape from having to do anything that he doesn't want to do. <laughs> I pull him back now. In just a few seconds, you guys are going to see what I'm talking about. See him backing up and he knows he can slip out. It's just a thing that he learned he can do. And he goes right after the dog that he wants to harass. And this can become very dangerous very quickly. So what I recommended in this case was a prone collar, which is a very effective and safe tool that is going to help create boundaries for this dog. So I am slowly putting the collar on him and explaining to the owner how the prone collar works, how to fit it correctly, and what to expect from using a prone collar to help train him. As you guys see, I have not yet put the leash attached to the prone collar. I'm making sure that the collar is fit correctly. And then I'm going to get Chico familiar with the sensation of the prongs around the neck before I ever switch the, the leash to the prone collar. Because see how he pulls that? We don't want the dog to do that when they're not familiar with a prone collar. We want to give them that chance to understand what is going on first. I am adjusting the prone collar so that it fits him correctly. 
and then we're going to start with the actual training for Chico today. Look at him trying to back up. It's very important that he learns that that is no longer an option because if he keeps getting away with those things, he just becomes more powerful and basically more confident that he can continue to do the things that he's doing even when the owners are chasing him and yelling at him and none of that is effective because we're not really intervening with the bad behaviors and how he is being allowed to basically get away with them. So today we're going to change his mentality and actually show him that we can certainly stop him and where we can trick him into thinking that he needs to listen every time because now he will basically realize that all these things that he's doing now and he thinks we don't know how to stop we are showing him that we can and over time the dog just associates with like hey the best way to do this is to listen you know because every time i try to misbehave they catch me and I get corrected and they always stop me on my tracks. Like right now, he's trying to do it again. But from this point on, Chico is no longer going to be able to get away with his bad behaviors. And I'm going to continue to explain to you guys what I'm doing. The first step is to teach Chico how to walk on the leash properly without pulling and trying to drag his owners around because when we teach him this, it will make everything else much easier when there are other distractions like with other dogs and him trying to get to them. If he already knows the basics of just having enough self-control to even just walk calmly next to his owner. So the first thing I'm doing is walking him around and reinforcing that I need him to stay next to me. So every time he tries to not walk next to me, I'm going to apply pressure on the leash to reinforce it, as you guys will see. But also when he's being stubborn and he doesn't want to move, I'm going to apply pressure the right way to get him to move. So like right there, very good. We want a dog to walk calmly like this all the time. So that established right from the beginning that they should always remain calm and just walk next to you. You see him being stubborn, I'm going to ensure that he continues to move on with me and walking with me even when he saw another new dog approach him once in a while you're going to see me redirecting him with a little gentle but firm jerk on the leash like a tag on the leash as you see right there and see how that gets his attention and that's the whole purpose of using the leash and using a collar that helps you reinforce the the commands that you're trying to give your dog or even just shaping them into the behaviors that you want them to to give you so like if you want him to walk next to you i have to reinforce that a new dog knows to walk next to me so as you see he's pretty calm and relaxed next to me and even with the dogs moving around him he's relatively calm compared to how he was just a few minutes ago you see owen right in front of him and he's not even paying attention to him when this is, would just never happen before he's always very interested in any dog moving around him he's obviously not perfect yet uh, i'm trying to shape him where he literally knows to always be on my left side and be a little bit calmer he's a little bit like anxious and trying to move but again it's only his first time being restrained and basically you know having to work on his self-control but before he was just go 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 now he has to hold himself back a little bit doesn't mean that he's happy about it or that he understands why we're doing it but eventually he will and he'll be a much calmer and happier dog he's already walking pretty good i took him for a little run so you can see that he is moving along with me and he's not really fighting it as much so we're going to work with him on a leash first to build 
that relationship that we want and that understanding between us that when we call him, we want him to come to us. When we're walking together, we want him to walk with us. So we have to start on the leash. You see how he backs up when I apply pressure? So that pressure is allowing me to communicate with him. If you don't do that, you pretty much don't have a way to get the dog's attention and then you're just running in circles trying to, to do so, you know, and you just never get their attention. You need to control the environment. You need to be able to use techniques and tools that allow you to communicate with your dog. And that's pretty much what the prong collar is doing here in this case. We're going to continue to repeat this because repetition is going to make it perfect. You see like me trying to get him to sit, he's fighting the pressure because he's not used to this type of training. He's not used to having to do things that he doesn't want to do. But because of how he's behaving as you guys saw and how dangerous that can be both for him and for other dogs because he can run in front of a car, he can literally hurt another dog very badly even by trying to play with him. This is definitely very important that he learns to control himself. Another thing that I use the prone collar for is to help teach and reinforce a sit. Um, not really teach sit, but to actually more so reinforce. So with a dog that already knows, like he does, but he really never sits on command, especially not at the park with a distraction. So now I'm using the prone collar. You see the, his on his face right there, like, you know, what dog is this? Because with the right tools, he can just reinforce things that otherwise he just cannot do. And with the prone collar, you see me reinforcing that sit. And now also to reinforce like, like hey, we're moving. See how he's trying to get to his own and he's trying to avoid the training. But with the prone collar, it allows me to be like, Hey, no, we're going to move this way. We're going to do this. We're going to stay here when, you know, this is a very big dog. Again, very powerful. We need something that allows us to communicate with him. So even though he's trying to fit, if he didn't have a prone collar on, he would have that much more power and it would be nearly impossible for someone to actually completely control him and be able to communicate with him. Not only are we trying to just control him, we're also trying to move on for, to other things, bigger things like getting him to sit on command and stay on command and just getting him to be calmer. So that is how the prone collar is coming in handy. Now, he's doing fantastic, fantastic here with another dog trying to hump him and he's actually controlling himself really good, which again, with the help with the prone collar, he allows me to do this. I would not otherwise be able to do this because he's such a big dog. He actually weighs just probably as much as me or more. And um, it shows you guys how much this tool actually can help you. Now you see Chico trying to fight the leash here because again, he knows that this is something that now can actually restrain him where before he had all that control because he could apply so much more pressure on the leash. Now we have something that holds him back. And also you notice that when there was a chaotic situation, it was easier for me to pull him away from it than it would have been if he didn't have a prone collar on. So that is again why the prone collar comes in so handy. And look how much calmer he is. And being the first time, he's still going through all the the process of learning to respect the prone collar where it's something completely new but he is already so much calmer and watch what's going to happen in a little bit and how i can handle the situation with such a big dog thanks to having a prone collar on Now I'm replaying this in slow motion so you guys can see what I did here. Whenever I was able to get his head around and he got close to me, I was able to basically hold his head close to me, like right there, thanks to the prone collar, with very little effort where he cannot turn his head to bite another dog. So this is a really good way if there's ever a dog coming after your dog and you want to, and you have the bigger dog and you want to hold your dog back, like sometimes it's a little dog, and you know you don't want your big dog to kill them so you can simply hold the head away to protect your dog from getting in trouble by hurting another dog so keep that in mind if there's ever a dog that you know is not going to hurt yours hold your dog back so that you don't get in trouble and your dog doesn't get in trouble oh the puppy the puppy's at home today
Here you go, I got your power. <laughs> Another thing I am working on with Chico and also teaching his owner how to do is to stop the bad habit of slipping out of the collar. Obviously, he has a loose collar already because of all the points actually breaking it. But he has this bad habit of pulling backwards to escape, as you can see him trying to do with me. But what I'm doing is I'm really paying close attention to it, and that's my correction. So whenever he does it, I go with him, and as soon as he stops, I apply a firm correction to let him know that that behavior comes with a consequence. So not only I do not let him escape from the collar, he also gets corrected for it so that he knows to stop trying to do so. Again, this is very important because it's so dangerous for him and for other dogs if he escapes at the, the wrong time and go after the wrong dog or in the, at the wrong place. Now I am handling him without a prone collar, so you guys can see that it is not as easy to get his attention. But I did a technique there with a leash, just in case you ever are in a position where you forgot your prone collar or um, your prone collar breaks and you have a dog that is still in training, you can make a loop with the leash and put it around your dog's head because this way it's going to get their attention more than just a regular flat collar. So you see me there using that technique to restrain him without a prone collar and can you train a dog without a prone collar yes as you guys saw me trying to redirect him with the regular flat collar on there on his neck but it's just not realistic and it's you're not going to get the same level of good results it's not going to be as quick and effective so that is why i always say why not use a prone collar it is a safe gentle tool but that does definitely create restrict uh, restriction and, and um and boundaries due to the sensations of having the prongs around the neck. He's very distracted. Yeah. <laughs> it's very important that he gets a little bit more focused with the training, because otherwise we're not going to make as much progress. Now this is me just literally waiting for the owner to come so that we can continue with the training. Uh, it is very important that when you're trying to train your dog that you really make it a priority and be very focused and dedicated to it because otherwise you're just not going to get the same result you know you i'm here to teach you and the dog not just the dog so it's very important that you stay focused during training so i can avoid this thing that's him trying to get away from the situation because this all of what it does mainly is creating the shift boundaries All right, so now he's gonna be on your left side. Pull him back a little bit if you need to get his attention. Uh, whatever is easier for you, honestly, but just be consistent with one side. So if left is the, the side that you choose, just always keep him on your left side. Now, yeah, now no time for more sniffing. He already did his running and playing. Now you're just going to be very strict with the walk. See how he's not trying to pull you. And even if he sees a dog and he gets a little bit interested, it'll be much easier for you to redirect him. 
now it's time for his owner to handle him for the first time after I did a little training with him and also with the first time uh, with the prone collar on and you guys can see here a major difference already this is only section one we have a few things that we have to work on and we're going to be continue to do follow-up trainings once or twice a week and I will make sure to post updates here on this channel so make sure you guys subscribe and follow me on Instagram to see little clips of the behind the scenes while I'm still training him until I post the next video I have everything linked in the description below but you guys can see here how he's a lot calmer already and I want to show you guys the full training process to get him where he can be off leash and still remain obedient and also much better on a leash which I'm sure after just about three four sections you guys are going to see a completely different dog let me know what you guys think of this type of video and if you like it, I will make sure to post more. I hope it helps you. See you next time.